Several years ago, Granbury ISD adopted a new appraisal program that it called the Granbury Appraisal Program. Recently, we'd been using the old Google Sites to house your GAP profile, but now we're going to switch that uh, site over from the old Google Sites to the new Google Sites. What you're going to need to do is go to this website address, bit.do slash gap site. What you should see is a Google Drive folder with one item inside of it. It could look like this as a tile, or it could like look like this as a row. What we're going to do is we are going to create a copy of this Google site. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the icon, right click, and come down to make a copy. This takes several minutes to do. I'm going to pause my video and then I will resume it once the, video, once the new site has been created. The website has now been created. If you'll go and look in your recent documents, you'll find the most recent document is going to be your site. Go ahead and click on this site. Unlike the old Google Sites, the new Google Sites will allow this website to live inside of your Google Drive, just like any other document would. So you don't have to go to sites.google.com to find this website anymore. We're going to rename this website three times. We're going to put our campus, our first name, and our last name. We're going to repeat this next to the Texas logo. We've had a lot of people also add the words gap portfolio to their titles, and that helps them while they're searching for their portfolio and their drive to be able to locate it. The last place that we're going to rename this is we're going to put in our information on our home page. If you've never used Google Sites before, it's really easy to add things, to change things, and to move items around. If I wanted to make my font smaller, I can do that. If I wanted to align it to the right or to the center, I can do that. If I wanted to make my picture bigger, I can do that as well. To add a picture, I'm going to add, click on the plus sign, and then I can either upload a photo from my Google Drive I can select an image from the internet, or I can upload a photo that is locally existing on my computer. On the right-hand side is going to be our navigator, which shows three options, insert, pages, and themes. We're going to click on pages, and you'll see that there are three pages for this new gap site. It used to be that there was a more intensive about me and a resume page and a philosophy of education page. We have gotten rid of those and we've also made a few changes to the different pages. The first page that we're going to look at is our goals. If you click on the drop down menu next to goals, there's going to be five years worth of goals that are going to be built out. We feel that this is going to give uh, teachers a bit of a better opportunity to be able to reflect on their goals for years to come. So we're going to click on 2019-2020 goals. The way that the school district envisions this is that campus goals will align with district goals. For example, if one of our district goals is to increase reading comprehension scores, then one of our campus goals might be to increase reading level scores from this to this. And your personal goal should then fall in line with your campus goal. So a personal goal might be implementing Wicker strategies in order to increase reading and writing scores, or it might be to uh, work on guided reading stations three days a week. We can also include personal goals such as uh, being able to receive a new certification or earn a new master's degree or an, uh, a different level of teaching proficiency. But these personal and campus goals are going to be due to you on September 23rd. Every principal is responsible for setting their campus's goals. So every teacher or every teacher in a grade level should have the same campus goals. And then your personal goals should reflect those campus goals. The next page over here is professional learning. We changed this from professional development for a few reasons. If you click on the drop down menu and then look at 2019-2020, 
it used to be that you would have to insert all of your professional development that you have cured over the last year. We feel that Eduphoria is the location where this should be done and that gap should be focused on teacher growth and being innovative in your classroom. So instead of calling it professional development, we've called it professional learning because we also recognize that there are plenty of teachers in Granbury ISD that are learning in different ways that don't account for hours. So for an, a learning opportunity, I could put something like hype up your lessons with HyperDocs, a session from Teach for Greatness. I did receive hours for Teach for Greatness, but this isn't going to be something that is, it's either something you're learning with hours or learning without hours. This is kind of like a top three to five list of what opportunities have you created or have you taken advantage of in order to become a better teacher? And I'll talk about how, how I implemented HyperDocs in my classroom. And then I'll talk about how it improved my teaching. And here we're going to be talking about the evidence of student achievement or teacher growth. This used to be a PD certificate that you would have to download from Eduphoria. But we want this section to be about implementation and not acquisition. So what we want here is we want you to insert evidences from student work or from your own personal work or pictures or videos that your students are engaged in activities in. We do not want you to give us a certificate. We want to see that these are the different challenges and different uh, strategies that you're using. Maybe another learning opportunity you have is that you're plugged into a professional learning community. So you could put in the uh, professional learning community Hashtag ed tech chat. A professional learning community is a community of people on social media that are sharing ideas using a different hashtag. And you can talk about the different uh, strategies that you picked up using this professional learning community. This also works for things like Pinterest boards or podcasts or blogs, uh, but we don't want to limit teachers to only learning between May 31st and July 18th during the summer in a Granbury ISD building. We want to open up this as an opportunity for teachers to show their innovation and show that they're trying different things in their classroom. We're asking all teachers pick three to five learning opportunities. We feel that any more than five and the changes you're making aren't going to be impactful, any less than three, and you're not stretching yourself enough as a teacher. The last section that we're going to look at is over here on the right hand side. It's going to be our reflection section. This will be done prior to your summative with your appraiser. And when we look on 2019, 2020 reflection, it should be two questions for each of your three to five goals. What progress have you made towards achieving your goal and what impact has it had on student growth? We ask that all of our teachers try to model to our students that failure is okay so long as there's good feedback that's taken from it. This is an opportunity for teachers to be able to give feedback to their appraisers, to the curriculum department, and to the technology department so that we know what is and is not working, what is needed and what is not needed, and then we can help to further support you all in your efforts. If at any time you delete a page, we have a template page that is going to be hidden. These templates can be uh, taken and duplicated and then put into the page that it corresponds to. The last thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to publish this website. The big blue publish button next to your Google account icon is going to make this website live. Go ahead and click on the publish button and then go ahead and click publish again. We are setting this so that anyone at Granbury ISD can view the site. This is because we are going to have uh, this website being viewed by those with the link. The only people with the link are going to be the people that are on your campus. So your appraisers or your instructional specialists. One thing to know about Google Sites is these websites auto save just like any of the other Google Suite tools. Unfortunately, they do not auto publish. So any changes that you make to your site will not reflect until you hit publish again. So if I were to delete all of these items and then get my site link and view my site, those changes haven't been made yet because I haven't published the site again. So anytime I make a change, I need to come back up and I need to hit the publish button again. 
now that I've made those changes and republished, when I get my link, you'll see that those changes have been made to my website. Finally, we're going to share this website with two people. And while you're probably thinking it's your principal and your appraiser, you're wrong. What we're going to do is share it with myself and Danielle Parsons. One of the issues that principals were having with the old GAP site was that they were having a difficult time being able to monitor and track all of the people's websites in their department or in their uh, campus. What we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a hyperdoc for those principals with all of your sites linked to that hyperdoc. We feel that this is going to add extra accountability to your appraisers to know what your goals are and also give more accountability to you as a teacher to have uh, your appraisers better access to your site. Once you have put in our names, go ahead and click send. And you finished.